Hey, what's going on guys? It's Omniarch, and I just wanted to talk to you about uh, a topic that kind of fascinated me when I first started my, um, you know, little self-journey on trying to learn how to make money or how money is made, and uh, I just wanted to share this with you, as you could tell by the title of the video, how, you know, rich people get richer and poor people get poorer. Um, I am by no means rich. Um, I have not, you know, I am not rich at all. I'm definitely not, um, <clears throat> not even close. <laughs> um, but this isn't really uh, financial advice so much as it is just how things work. And uh, I, I always wondered, because you always hear people say, like, oh, you know, money is drawn to money. Um, you know, people with money always make more money or whatever. And I always wondered why that was the case, because it definitely seems that way, right? It definitely uh, seems like, you know, the rich people um, get, you know, tax breaks or whatever. And it just seems like you're always hearing about um, how rich people are making all this money with deals and stuff or whoever it may be in any industry, um, they are continuing to get rich while uh, these things don't happen to middle class or, or poor people. You know, you never really hear about a, a poor person who uh, just, like, you know, overnight makes a bunch of money unless they win a lottery or something, but even that is short-lived because of their mindset, mind state, uh, if you will. <laughs> so, um, basically, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a scenario. I'm just going to take a random business. Today, I got my haircut, so we'll start with that. And that's actually true. I got my haircut today, and it looks pretty good. Now, take a barber, for instance, and we're going to talk about how a barber makes money. Um, a barber makes money by uh, cutting hair. He cuts, you know, however many uh, heads a day, and he charges, we'll say, $15 per haircut. So, you know, if he, <clears throat> excuse me, if he cuts... Uh, 20 people's uh, hair per day, then he's going to make $200 or $300 that day. Um, because 20 people times $15 per cut, so that's $300. Uh, so I don't know, um, you know, how many people hair, people who cut hairs, uh, barbers, I don't know how many heads they cut a day, but um, I feel like 20 would be probably a lot, but it's doable. Um, but also, we're, all, we're obviously taking uh, into account that everything is constant. We're going to assume that they, they cut everybody's head at the same speed, and they charge everyone the same amount regardless. So, that's $300 a day, and then you have to take into account expenses like electricity, um, and the, the uh, money it takes to drive there, and rent, and everything that goes along with it, plumbing, and all that stuff. So, whatever their expenses are, you, you would subtract that from however much they made that day, and that would be their gross profit or loss if they didn't make uh, enough haircuts during the day. And that's it. So, if you look at that and you say, okay, well, how, how can he make more money? Well, the first thing you could say is he could charge more per haircut. Uh, but that's kind of restrictive because he can't charge more than his competitors because if his competitors are only charging, uh, you know, if they're charging $15 as well, he can't jump up to 18 because, you know, he, no one's going to go to him. Everyone's going to save a few dollars and go to the next person uh, who's cutting their hair as well. And we're also going to assume that we're not doing designer haircuts or styles or anything. We're just talking about cutting one person's hair, uh, you know, standard male haircut. So, he can't really, he's kind of restricted with how much he can raise his price because, you know, com competition is, is, uh, is going to drive him out of business if he raises it too high. What else could he do? Well, he could cut more people's heads per day. He could cut more hairs per day. Um, and thus increasing the amount of money he gets because he gets money from more people because he can do it more times per day. So, assuming that he could do that, assuming that he could cut hair faster, um, you would also need to assume that he would have an endless line of people waiting outside the door to get their haircut, and he would cut them from the minute he walks in the door to the minute he leaves, and uh, however many people he gets done is how much money he makes. So crunching the numbers, like I just said, assuming he works for 8 hours a day, he cuts one head every 3 minutes, charges $15 per head, and he takes a 30 minute lunch break, because that's realistic, he would cut 150 heads, and he would uh, make $2,250 per day. Um, that's how much he would make per day. Now, obviously, that's completely unrealistic, but but we're just talking about how could how could a barber make more money, right? And that's it. That's the most any barber could ever make, you know. If you're the best barber in the world, and you can cut a head in three minutes, and get it perfect every time, and you charge $15, that's how much you would make per day. Now, is he going to get rich that way? No, because he's going to make more money, yes, but that's the most he can make per hour. He can't increase the amount of money he makes um, per day higher than that because he's already um 
you know, limited with competition with how much he can charge, and he's already the best and fastest at what he does, so that's the most money he can make. And, uh, you know, obviously he could lower his expenses and stuff like that, but in terms of making money, making, uh, you know, just uh, money coming into his pocket, that's the most he can make. So how could he get rich? Well, you know, here's the thing. Money can make you money, and that's the whole point of this video. Um, if he wanted to get rich, he would have to invest his money, and investing is basically... Um, giving your money to a certain uh, company, entity, or anything, um, or a startup even if you're feeling risky, and hoping that they make a profit. And because you gave them your money, and because they needed it to start, and they've been able to make a profit, uh, they can give you something in return. Now, um, there's a million different ways to invest, a million different, uh, you know, things to invest in or whatever. I got so lucky with that kill. Um, but we're just, we'll talk about the stock market, just because that's something people easily understand it's very familiar familiar to people how does the stock market work well you buy stock in a company uh, whatever company it might be um, the popularity of the stock you know how likely it is to go up is generally um, indicated by uh, how much it costs you know uh, blue chip stocks uh, like Apple or Microsoft they're pretty much guaranteed to continue to, to rise um, and not really fall by too much. It's, it's pretty much a safe bet to invest in, in blue chip stocks because they've shown for a very many years that they're going to continue to be innovative and continue to dominate their field and increase their, uh, their stock price or the price per share. So just an example, um, we're just going to do some quick math. Say you bought a stock, it costs $15 and you buy 100 shares, um, that would cost you $1,500. Now let's say that uh, the stock price went from fifteen to twenty dollars per share. So you have a hundred shares. That's two thousand dollars, and you paid a hundred one thousand five hundred for it. You would make a five hundred dollar profit if you sold the stock when it went up to twenty bucks per share. Now um, there's also brokerage fees and things like that, and you have to uh, file your taxes, and uh, that money gets taxed and stuff. Um, but you know. Just as a very general sense, that's how it works. You know, you put your money in a stock, and if if the stock rises, if the company does well, then you get more money back than what you paid. Uh, if the stock, if the company is doing poorly, the stock will fall, the price per share will fall, and uh, you know, then you can either sell at a loss and lose money, or you can continue holding on to the stock, and uh, you know, hopefully it'll go up either back to what you want uh, or back to what you paid for. That way, you could at least kind of break even, or you would wait for it to go higher than that. And hopefully, you know, make some money still. So, now the point of the video, the point of this entire video, why I'm talking about this is, people can say, okay, well, you know, I don't have a good job, so I'm not going to invest in the stock market yet, because I need my money to survive. I need to pay for, you know, things that I need, and food, and shelter, and, you know, all that stuff, which is fine. That makes complete sense, um, which is also why people who are, um, you know, in a lower or middle class don't have money to invest in stocks or in really anything, which makes sense, but... What people don't realize is how much fat could be trimmed from their bank account. I mean, you know, a lot of times that barber will make that kind of money and say, oh, well, now I can afford a bigger house. Now I can afford a better car. Now I can afford to eat better. Now I can afford to, you know, get a new computer or a new television or refurnish uh, my house or, you know, add an addition to my house or re-carpet the living room, whatever. People see an increase in their income as an excuse to uh, live better or, you know, do something along those lines. And... That's not that's not how you get rich, you know. Just because you've gone, you know, from one income level to another that may be slightly higher, doesn't mean you should spend slightly more. You know, if it would be more intelligent to save the extra money that you've made by increasing your wage and putting it in a brokerage account and you know doing some research on stocks on the side. And you know, if you are good at research and if you can come up with a good company, you can invest in them, and then you could double the amount of money that you've invested or triple it or whatever, and you know. People do this through 401ks and stuff like that, but, you know, just by not buying that new computer or not putting an addition on your house or, or living below your means, basically, uh, you can save money and put it into accounts and, and make money that way. And that's how rich people get rich, um, you know, and they, I, they do it on a much larger scale because they have millions of extra dollars because they've done it over and over again or they inherited the money from their parents or whatever. But that's how it works in a nutshell. Obviously, that was a super simplified version, but that's just the theory. That's just, you know, the, the mindset, the way you have to be thinking if you want to go from middle class to uh, rich. And 
I thought that was a fascinating topic because I never thought of it that way. I always thought, oh, I made an extra few bucks, I can, you know, buy a new game or whatever. And, you know, that's not how you have to think if you want to eventually get rich. But anyway, this has been a pretty sweet gameplay. Hopefully you enjoyed the commentary. I really uh, put, this, put some thought into this one, and it's something that I really enjoy. So if you did, please drop a like on the video. It really helps me way more than you even can know. Um, and also share the video on Google, Facebook, and Twitter if, uh, if you really enjoyed it. And always, as, as I would say, subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed videos like this one. And that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later. OmniArc out.